These are the world's first self-adhesive postage stamps. They were issued back in 1964 in Sierra Leone. And these stamps were pretty much the beginning of a self-adhesive revolution. One that has seen a lot of countries move away from the standard lick and stick type stamps to ones that you just simply peel and place on an envelope. No licking required. And it's been very much welcomed by anyone who's had to lick a stamp in the past. Unless you're a philatelist, then you're probably not a fan of these self-adhesive stamps. I need a map. Sierra Leone's postal service was trying to solve a problem it had. It's a problem that a lot of countries have to deal with. Weather. It's located in Western Africa, just above the equator. And most regions that lie in between the tropics, that's the Tropic of Cancer, close to the 23rd parallel north, and the Tropic of Capricorn, close to the 23rd parallel south, experience tropical weather, heat and humidity for most of the year. So water-based adhesive stamps that are activated with a simple lick are easily activated by the humidity, which makes storing and transporting the stamps very difficult because they stuck to anything, especially themselves. And this would create a tremendous amount of waste and loss for the postal service transporting their stamps. So Sierra Leone pioneered the idea of using an oil-based adhesive instead of a water-based adhesive, which would solve the problem because oil is not impacted by the humidity. Uh, and Tonga, which is right above the Tropic of Capricorn, was soon to follow Sierra Leone and issued their oil-based adhesive stamps, which are a favorite of mine. These banana-shaped stamps issued in 1969. And this brings up a point. While Tonga stamps are banana-shaped, Sierra Leone stamps are shaped in the outline of the country. By making self-adhesive stamps that were stuck to backing paper, they no longer had to be geometric plane shapes that were connected via perforation, such as squares or triangles. They could be any shape imaginable. A process called die cutting was used to make these shapes. Also notice that the backing paper could come in a variety of colors and advertisements or other graphics could go on the back of the backing paper. A lot more things can now be done with these self-adhesive stamps. Now, the self-adhesive revolution was slow to catch on from 1964, but today it seems like a lot of countries are issuing their stamps as self-adhesive. And this is a problem for philatelists because... The old water-based stamps are very easy to loosen and remove from paper. Just by reintroducing water to the adhesive by soaking the stamp, it would float off of the envelope and with just a quick dry and press, the stamp was ready for display. Well, the self-adhesive stamps are not water-based. Water doesn't have an impact on this oil adhesive. In chemistry, it's known as a non-polar adhesive in which the polar water molecule doesn't have the same effect as it does on the water-based adhesive. Now, I could spend hours soaking the self-adhesive stamp and I still may have to try pull it off, which could damage the stamp. It could also cause the stamp to curl. Sometimes when the stamp comes off, it's still sticky. It's just a mess. What we need is something to break down the oil adhesive. We need an oil solvent. I found three different products through other videos as well as through some discussion boards that stamp collectors are using to separate their self-adhesive stamps. Now, these oil solvents should work fairly quickly, but let's address the concerns up front. Firstly, these are skin irritants, so we must be careful. I'm gonna be using gloves as well as protective eyewear. Secondly, oil solvents are usually very flammable. Two of these products are petroleum-based, so you can't be careful enough. Also, I'm worried about this damaging the stamp in any way? Will it fade the color or will it make the postmark ink wash off? I'm going to be using the same issued stamp. It's a 2018 USA commemorative stamp celebrating the 100th anniversary of airmail. I have them both on thin white envelope paper as well as on brown envelope card. They've all been canceled. So they're all the same stamp just to limit the amount of variables here. Now I've never done this before so I'm gonna go ahead and figure it out and get some results and then I'll share my findings with you. Cue the montage.
so I have to say, all three products worked incredibly well and with relative ease. Uh, each of the stamps came off within seconds. So let's go through each of the products and I'll tell you my findings, starting with Bestine. As it says on the container, it's a solvent and thinner for rubber cement. It's made by a company called Speedball. I got this 16 fluid ounce can for 14 US dollars on Amazon, but you can also get it at hobby shops. It contains heptane, which is an oil solvent, and you can look for other products that contain heptane that can also do the same job. Now, I poured the Bestine into an eyedropper bottle, which cost me about 50 cents, but I did this for a few reasons. Firstly, I just want to work with a little bit of the liquid at a time and use the eyedropper component to place the drops on the back of the paper. Also, this is an airtight container. Bestine evaporates very quickly, so you don't want to have a container open while you're working with it. So this worked really well. Now, it's just a matter of placing drops on the back of the paper and letting that soak through to the adhesive. I might have been a little too generous with the drops. You don't really need a lot. But the best method I found to remove the stamp was using my tweezers, getting it under the stamp and then just running it along the back. It came off really easy that way. The next product I used was Gamsol, which is also a petroleum-based liquid. It's made by a company called Gamblin and was quite a bit more expensive. I paid about nine US dollars for these 4.2 fluid ounces. And you can also get it at hobby shops or online. I also placed it in an eyedropper bottle and did the exact same thing I did with the Bestine. The only thing is I think the Bestine worked better on the postmark or the cancellation ink. Bestine seemed to have a very minimal effect, whereas the Gamsol seemed to thin the ink and widen the lines of the cancellation a little bit. And finally, the most interesting one is the Pure Citrus Orange Air Freshener which you can find in hardware stores or also online. I paid about 10 US dollars for it. And this is not a petroleum based product. There's no chemicals and it's non aerosol. It's natural oils from the peels of an orange. It contains limonene, which is a naturally occurring oil solvent that is found in the orange peels. And it does a fantastic job of pulling the stamp off the paper. I just simply sprayed the paper and let it soak through to the stamp adhesive. And again, was able to separate by running my tweezers between the stamp and the paper. One added benefit is that your workspace will smell like oranges. It's, it's fantastic. Now, how do you get the glue off the back of the stamp? Well, there's two methods. One method I tried was simply adding talcum powder to the back of the stamp. It worked really well. You don't even notice that it's on, but it's a bit messy because it goes on the front of the stamp as well. Another method is to use a blade or a sharp edge and simply scrape the glue off. You might need to add a little more solvent to the back of the stamp just to get the glue to come off. But I like this way the best because the stamp then is completely clean. I used a steel ruler. It worked really well. You do need a little bit of skill or some practice because I damaged one of the stamps by tearing the corner. So proceed with caution, but I do like the end result the best. Also as a finishing touch, I used a cloth to wipe the back of the stamps. This was more so needed for the limonene air freshener because it was a little bit more oily than the other two, which seemed to evaporate very quickly. Finally, when looking at the cancellation ink, I've already mentioned that the Bestine seemed to be the better of the two petroleum, but the limonene did the worst in my opinion. When I flipped the stamps over, you can see how much of the ink may have bled or ran and uh, the limonene did the worst, but the Bestine had the least running. So I'm going to go with that moving forward. Other than the cancellation ink, none of them impacted the imagery of the stamp. I tried a few other stamps with some stronger vivid colors and they seem to do really well. None of the colors got washed away or faded. Now I would say that the pure citrus orange air freshener was the simplest to use, the easiest to use, as well as the safest. However, the Bestine did the better job of the three when it came to the cancellation ink. Now, how can you tell whether or not a stamp is self adhesive before you start using these solvents? Well, Start by looking at the serration or the teeth of the stamp. If they look a bit rough, like they've been torn or pulled apart, then they are not self-adhesive stamps. So you would not use an oil solvent to separate them from the paper. However, if they look smooth as if they are too perfect, that they definitely were not pulled apart, then they are likely self-adhesive stamps. Remember, but self-adhesive stamps do not need perforations. They come on backing paper and just peel off. They don't need to be pulled apart from other stamps. So that jagged edge is just put there to make it look like a postage stamp. So if you see perfect teeth, it's self-adhesive. If you're still unsure, first float it in water, then you'll realize whether or not it was self-adhesive, and then you can move into the oil solvents afterwards. 
I hope you found this video useful. Let me know if you're a purist and you don't believe in using chemicals within philately. I'm curious to find out why. Uh, if you do use chemicals, which ones do you use? If you're just starting out and you're finding other products in your country that aren't necessarily uh, Bestine or Pure Citrus, but find something similar, comment below and let everybody else know. Let's be a community and help each other out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.